Lit vlogs, yeah. It is day one of week two. And at this point I haven't even edited week one and I'm pretty sure I don't have enough storage to film a long video, but let me just say something right now because this is kind of important. I am in philosophy class, basically just um, going through module zero and there's a part where, you know, need to know questions and stuff. And I want to be in the queer theory alternative reading group, right? So obviously I was skimming through the questions that people are asking and people are literally using that section as an excuse to post all of their ignorant, sexist, and transphobic beliefs. And legally, I'm not allowed to show what they're saying. So I'm just gonna talk about it. There are people there who talk about how non-binary is invalid, gender fluid is invalid, that trans people should just be content with what they were born with as if they think that trans people that every single trans person automatically needs to transition just to be valid like what's wrong with you i don't i don't understand people who think like that anyway oh yeah in the end one of them goes on to say that You know the biology argument and saying that women are the ones breastfeeding children in the ancient times <laughs> saying that men are the ones who hunt for a reason they literally said that women would have no use in hunting because they would just be they would be weak that's literally what they said. Like, I understand what you're attempting to say, but the way you're saying it is so, it's so, it's such a poor execution of attempting to explain that you're a bigot. Just say you're a bigot and leave. I understand that in college you're exposed to many different types of people, but I did not expect to be visually assaulted with those kinds of opinions and beliefs. Like, I seriously sometimes forget that there are people like that who exist. That they were. Oh, yeah, one of them was also um, insulting people who prefer to use neo pronouns. And I am not allowed to um, start a fight in the comments of their questions, so I'm not gonna do that, but I am allowed to talk shit about them here without saying their names, so <laughs> I don't know y'all personally, but what y'all said says a lot about you and it just it disgusts me honestly that you feel the need to make people feel bad just because they're not living the way you want them to even if they're they're, they're not even involving you at all like there was one who was saying like they don't like it that when people misgender or refer to you incorrectly that they get cancelled and called out like that's unless you're being intentionally offensive i don't see why there should be a reason for you being cancelled you know what i mean like yes it's it's a collaborative effort and a combined effort <laughs> of being decent from both sides, okay? These pe the people that you're worried about offending have already dealt with so many um, mishaps their whole lives of 
having to adjust to what society is comfortable with. So I'm sure if you really made an honest, honest mistake about referring to them, they wouldn't take it personally. They'd just be like, yeah, it's okay, and move on. So, you know, that the danger of being called out shouldn't be a concern for you unless welcome to day two of week two of lit vlogs <laughs> so i can barely get work done because globe wi-fi sucks ass and right now i'm using data just to freaking oh my gosh I missed the Zoom session. Bye. Um, anyways, so my Wi-Fi sucks, so I'm relying on data my, from my freaking phone right now. And it's uh, very unmotivating. But I got some stuff done today. I was able to read my art appreciation queer theory reading for my alternative reading groups group. And I'm trying to read... Uh, Ransom's criticism for Enlit42 and I missed this freaking zoom session holy crap uh, oh my gosh wow now it says no internet wonderful okay and hopefully if I can finish that text which would be a miracle because the let me tell you something about Norton Anthology <laughs> texts. They're really good, full of content. Yeah, subjective to some people, I guess. But the, f the way the text is stacked on top of each other, like one whole page is like, I don't know, like example, this is A4, right? And you print it. I mean, usually it gets printed landscape, but if this is A4, like landscape, this whole thing, is full like full like and it it's hard it's really hard to read so by the time you're done you're like you don't want to read other things but I have to because I have a bunch of stuff to read so that's life as a literature major in a nutshell just a bunch of stuff to read or maybe college in general I don't know I don't know cuz I know hello I've this is the only course I've ever been in so yeah um, I will try to get more things done. Hopefully the Wi-Fi gods will do me the honors and blessings of bestowing upon me the grace of Wi-Fi that actually loads. So, yes, I'm going to try and do that now. And I'll probably give you an update later or not, but I'm still going by my post-it system. And so far it's been effective and Pomodoros are pretty effective too where like you time yourself give yourself a specific time to work on something and when you're done you really stop and then set another timer for after the break so that's really good and I'm gonna show you Wudong because he's being super cute <laughs> okay see y'all the next one bye I mean next part of the video not the next vlog. Welcome to day three of Lit Vlogs week two. Good morning. This is your hair, ma'am. You actually look at it. Mm. Hello. So I was supposed to join a meeting today at 4, but Globe and you're slipping okay. um, so I guess and I ran out of go surf today, so and like uh, if I apply, it's gonna cost so much because it's gonna be a zoom meeting so 
it's gonna take up all of the data so what I'm gonna do now is just um, read some of the links that were sent to us in the module for NLIT 32 about the salons at the time, neoclassicism and such. So I'm gonna do that right now. And eventually I might just give up for a while and edit vlog week one, lit vlogs week one. <laughs> But yeah, um, I just hope to read all of these today so I can finish module one, or at least you know the, the external links for module one of Endless 32. And then finally read Ransom's criticism, and then I can bomb, and then go back and read Pretentious Young Ladies by Moliere, and then Phaedra and The Rape of the Lock, by Alexander Pope and uh, I'm caught up so far so I just want to keep my pace because I get easily distracted so I'm gonna go do that now hopefully I don't fall asleep these are tabs that were from last night so they're still here I'm not gonna refresh it because it will definitely turn into this and this it won't load canvas. Yay! Lulam update. Okay, I'll see y'all later. Round. Welcome to day four of Lit Vlogs Week 2. I'm gonna Today, kill myself. We're trying, Yuck! We're trying out mousse no! and vitamins. Why? Do it for, no! for the clout. No! For the clout! No! As you can see, they're cons- They're concerned. Oh, just got slapped! Welcome to day four. I already so said a while ago. Um, oh, frick. So I'm reading Ransom's Criticism, Inc. I'm on page 30. No, no, not 34. Um, page, I don't know. Cause like I combined Ransom and I can bomb, so. Technically, there's 37 pages in all, I'm in 34. Anyways, um, so there's this one part here that made me laugh. <laughs> Which, I don't know, it's not supposed to be funny, but it's really stuff like, random stuff like this, and like, literary, um, just literature in general. <laughs> that like, makes me laugh. It says here, I have read that some modern Broadway producers of comedy require a reliable person to seat himself in a trial audience and count the laughs. Their method of testing is not so subtle as Aristotle's, but both are concerned with the effects. Because they're talking about like criticism here and like how if you want to be objective in terms of criticism, you're not really supposed to talk about emotions and the effects of the, of the work on you but it has to be very objective that's why you know because it kind of loses its merit and its credibility when you start involving the emotional and like personal aspects of it and how it affected you that's why you always have to ripper ripper <sighs> refer to um like the reader or like one may blah 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 but you know um something i learned in freshman year so it has to be like third person and it definite it really cannot be concerned with uh <laughs> oblivion of the outer world the flowing of tears visceral or laryngeal <laughs> sensations <laughs> Am I saying that right? Uh, and such like, or one that induces perfect illusion or brings us into a spiritual ecstasy. So it really can be about the physiological effect. And yeah, I think that just part of it just made me laugh. And today I was able to attend philosophy class and we met in our breakout rooms. And it was cool. Um, met my group mates and they were all super nice 
and we shared some more answers and I'm low-key scared of Sir because he's super nice and I don't want to like disappoint him and he loves Judith Butler so and I had a, an extremely I wouldn't say extremely but like a hard time reading bodily I don't remember the name. No, but I don't remember the name. Bodily something by Judith Butler. Was it? Like maybe it's here. It's no. Did I seriously? Oh, I think I threw it away because it was full. Bodily inscriptions. There you go. It took a while, but I got there. And her wording is difficult, but I really enjoyed how she described that gender is performative and has several layers to it, and even brought up drag. So I feel like maybe if I were to read it again, I'd enjoy it more. But because I have still have a lot of stuff to read, I can't. Someday. Someday. Oh, sure. Sure. Sir shared an anecdote as well about like almost meeting Judith Butler. And like it was hilarious because he like has like, a crush on her. Like that's so cute. Loves her works and everything. And I think that's really cool. I wonder if I'm going to have an author that like I simp for. Oh no. A while ago, like, my, my little plant got caught in, like, when I moved my laptop. And I think I killed it a little bit. Anyways, um, Gucci's here sleeping. And um, I think I'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully, I can finish I Can Bomb tonight as well. And I'll talk about that tomorrow. So. Hello. Hello, it's day five of week two of Lit Vlogs. I still haven't edited week one. If I look tired, it's because I am being hit very hard by the iron deficiency. Because, um, it's the first day it's the first day of the worst time you know what I mean and like oh my gosh um I barely did anything today uh, I plan on finishing the I can bomb reading I have 15 more pages to go I'll try my best to keep my attention and my whatever and I did my assignment with my Groupmate, we were like in a pair, and like we had to like simplify this quote from I think it was pretentious young ladies, uh, and we did it over chat, so it was cool. It was really quick, and um, it was for Enlit Thirty Two, so I'm gonna read I Can Bomb, which is for Enlit Forty Two, and then hopefully if I finish. Then I can start reading either Rape of a Lock or Pretentious Young Ladies or finish Module 0 of Inlet 32. And this is just a quick update because honestly, I don't really have the energy today. But today I had to go out and like run errands for my mom. And I'm really tired. <laughs> and I was editing like some Instagram posts a while ago, but like my phone kept crashing because like 6S I hit. But like, yeah. Um, the dogs are both here. Louis wearing his belly band because he's in heat. So yeah, um, hope y'all are doing okay. I will share the takeaway this week probably on Sunday or something. Or maybe tomorrow. But tomorrow I expect to just do more readings. So hopefully I can get some rest as well. So I hope that I can really finish I Can Bomb today. So yeah. <sighs> so it's the last 
I guess, honorary last day of week two of lip vlogs, and my quote that I'm going to share for this last part of the video is from Iken Bombs. Oh, text about. What was this? I forgot the title. Um, anyways, I'll probably put it here. It says, I pointed out that. As words get into verse, they are, as it were, taken out of ordinary speech. They are surrounded by a new aura of meaning and perceived not against the background of speech in general, but against the background of poetic speech. Uh, they're basically talking about how words function in a poem compared to when they're just used in normal speech. And that speaks to me in a way because when I write songs I like to think that the mundanity of certain words gives something else to it I don't know like it's hard for me to describe but sometimes it doesn't take a huge metaphor to explain something in a song like Sometimes the most mundane things are really what catches people's ears. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, um, sometimes it's just, you know, say less. But yeah. Um, my tip of the week is don't put things off. Like, this, this is obviously like super obvious, but just don't. Like, if you're putting something off right now, this is a sign to not do that because I am so bad at that and I've gotten worse because of the that I can't say because um, YouTube doesn't like it when you say that word and I'm just trying to survive uh, when I finish I Can Bomb today, I will read Rip of the Lock and Pretentious Young Ladies. Hopefully, I can finish that by tomorrow. Finish Module Zero of End of the 32 tomorrow, as well as read Iliad Book One. It will probably, it'll probably just be a refresher because I read that last semester for my other subject and I have to. Then I'm going to have to circle back to Enlit and read the rest of the text, so... Yay! Oh, it's G! Hi, G! Bye, y'all. See you all next week.